I'm Josh Cooperman with a very special episode of Convo by Design. We're recognizing and celebrating the life's work and accomplishments of an amazing individual. We're welcoming a young new mind into the architecture community and remembering another friend that we lost way too soon. All in one night. Laughs, tears, joy. All from the ICAA Southern California Chapter's Legacy Dinner honoring architect Tim Barber. <laughs> For years now, I have had the privilege and the honor of emceeing the Institute for Classical Architecture and Arts Southern California Chapter's annual Legacy Dinner, recognizing the life's work of a member of our community. This year, this past year, it was to recognize Tim Barber, a wonderful man. And I, I truly, I mean that in every sense of the world. word. I consider him a friend. I think he's fantastic. He's an amazing architect. He is a previous guest on the show, and he is a liver of life. And I mean it. Uh, he's amazing. He's an absolute gem. He really is. This was a special night, and I wanted to take you there with me so you could hear everything that transpired, everything that happened. You are going to hear from ICAA, Southern California Chapter President, Darren Franks. You're going to hear from UCLA architecture student, uh, Delia Mizrahi who went through one of ICAA's fantastic programs as a young adult, you are going to hear Mark Appleton's sweet remembrance of Suzanne Reinstein and much more. Everything that happened, almost, from this year's Legacy Dinner. We'll get to that right after this. I am so proud of my partnership with Thermosol. They've been presenting partners of Convo by Design for four years now, and there is a certain amount of pride that comes with saying that the show's presented by the company that is the absolute best in the world at what they do. I believe that wholeheartedly. Thermosol engineers the most exceptional smart shower products and steam shower systems worldwide for a few reasons. They were the first company to design and patent the technology here in the United States, dating back to uh, 1958. Thermosol, a U.S.-based manufacturer based in Round Rock, Texas, employs an engineering team that designs, tests, and continuously refines the product. Their quality control team tests every single steam generator before it departs the factory. Who else does that? Uh, nobody that I know. I have, I have the pleasure of working with some world-class designers and architects who tell me, and if you're in the business, you know this, that the idea of luxury has changed, especially when clients want a spa-like bathroom. Steam is mandatory, or it's just not luxury. And if you want to add steam, you have, in my opinion, one true option. It's Thermosol. Mitch Altman, the third-generation CEO of this family-owned company, of 65 years, continues to innovate the bathroom and shower space through technological marvels such as intelligent showering systems, sound therapy, aromatherapy, technical interfaces, and so much more. And now, Thermosol, the industry leader in steam bath equipment and technology since 1958, is enhancing its already stellar family of products with a new indoor and outdoor luxury saunas, available in three design configurations. It's amazing. You're going to love it. Thermosol's latest collections offer luxurious features and exceptional design. And listen, bathrooms, bathroom design, it's just not luxury without steam. And for steam, there's really one true option if you want the finest experience and the best around. Check them out at thermosol.com and at thermosol on the socials. Almost. We're so close. We're so close. We're toasting. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I have helped this year. I love that. Thank you so much. It's funny because last year, for those of you who are here, it took me probably 20 minutes to get control. I don't think I ever had control. Hi. Um, I could go on. I'm Josh Cooperman, uh, host of Convo by Design. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you for coming tonight to the 8th Annual Legacy Dinner, honoring our friend, Tim Barber. Does this, does this feel like um, this is your life? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. 
thank you for coming out. Thank you, ICAA, Southern California Chapter, for hosting this, for doing this. It's, it is incredibly special to, to recognize people in our industry who go above and beyond, who do special things, um, because it, it raises all of our game a little bit, right? So thank you. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the night. We've got a very fun program scheduled for you. Glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Me again. I should have just stayed up here last time. Please help me welcome President of the ICAA Southern California Chapter, Mr. Darren Franks. Good evening, everyone. Thank you once again for uh, joining us at this year's event. Um, thank you very much, Josh, for introducing me. Um, first, I'd like to thank our hosts this evening. It is uh, Shane McCoy uh, Familia and Louis Familia. Thank you very much for hosting us at this amazing location. And. Um, we're also honored that Tim Barber is, is, uh, is a recipient of this award this year. He, he's, um, he was president of our chapter, I think, about 10 years ago. And he, um, he's been instrumental in everything we've done to do with um, education. And it's because of him that today uh, we have an incredible education program you know, he headed up with, uh, by Eric Evans. Um, and, uh, and we also have a program that's uh, expanding into many new schools around uh, Southern California. And um, so, Tim, it really is truly a pleasure. And you, you're very well deserving of this award, so thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> so um, this year is, uh, is my last year as the president of our chapter. It's been four years. And it's, uh, it's been a real, a true honor to, uh, to help, uh, you know, work with our board, to, to lead us to, uh, you know, engage with our, our members. And I've really enjoyed it. So it's been a real privilege. So thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, a couple more things. I want to thank Sonia Adams, uh, who's, who's our director. Thank you, Sonia. And she, she's, uh, she's the backbone of our, of our chapter. She's been instrumental in many things we do in growing our membership and, and putting together these amazing events. So we really wouldn't be in the place we are without her. Also, we have Diane Sipos here this evening. <laughs> That's uh, Sonia's predecessor. She's, so, um, and then now we're going to play a video. Um, it's, um, it's just a little peek into our New Heights program. Every, we have this program which educates young students um, about classical architecture and art and design. And um, we're going to show the video in a second. But I just want to say, I, before, before we seated, I had a chat with um, S Suzanne with Landry Design. And her daughter actually attended our New, our New Heights program last week with Ashley. And, and it was actually it was a very... It was great. It was really touching. She had a wonderful experience, and her daughter was actually surprised and impressed with what her mother does for a living. <laughs> she got to learn about classical orders and such, and she was, it was very, it just shows that, you know, the, the children are very open to learning these, these wonderful things. And, and so I'd like to go ahead and show this, uh, this video, please. This is building like right next to my house. And sometimes when I look at it, I can see all the topics that we learned about. Like sometimes I see like different columns on certain buildings and I'm like, oh, that's an ionic column or oh, that's a Doric column. I remember learning about these. We learned a lot. We learned a lot about columns and the types of architecture that's all around us today. Now I always look at the roofs and the way buildings stand up and it's really different from the way I used to look at everything before, it's really cool. 
A lot of people think that architecture is like a, a click. You, you don't really think much about it. You just put a structure on top of land. You just, you know, do it. You know, that's how, like, I thought of it. But now that I think about the work, uh, what you have to do, the, the places surrounding it, it's like a new way of thinking about architecture. Yeah, you have to think about the neighborhoods too, which I didn't think about at all. Like, that's something that I never really thought about. So that's cool. Well, I learned a lot about how different the symmetry is, where the different places with their architecture and landscaping. I learned a lot about how, like, more Western or classic architecture, they have more symmetry, whereas, like, in the Chinese garden, it's more about, like, the natural beauty of the place. I think art and architecture is really important because when you learn about it, you get to wonder more about what's around you and see what you know about it. We walked through the Japanese gardens and the rose gardens, which were really pretty and smelled really good. And now we're in the Chinese gardens and we're looking at kind of like a lake with a lot of houses and talking about architecture. I've been walking a lot and I we're at the Chinese garden right now and so I saw the lake and it was really pretty because it had like little water lilies in it and then there were a lot of statues and my friend and I, we did life imitating art there. I learned about how people were building the architectures and how the columns were made and how they got the idea from the architectures to make new architectures to surprise everybody because it definitely surprised me. It's important to learn about the things that are just like surrounding us in everyday life and looking back on the past and how we've done things before can impact how we do them in the future. So um, at this time, I'd like to invite to the stage uh, Dilia Mizrahi, who, is, um, uh, who uh, has been a student of our New Heights program. So. Hello. Hi. I, I, I didn't know that. I hadn't seen that video before, but I went to school with all of those people. I just graduated. They're little sixth graders, but now it's funny seeing them on the big screen like that. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Dili Mizrahi. I just recently graduated from Girls Academic Leadership Academy this past June, so I'm an incoming freshman. I'm at UCLA. It's very exciting. <laughs> um, but I started at Gala in 2016 when the school opened, and that was also the first year that the New Heights program came to Gala. I didn't get to go on that cool of a field trip, but I had an amazing experience otherwise. Um, the girls kind of stole my lines, but I started off and the New Heights program showed up one day and I was very excited and I remember walking into the gala maker space empty-handed and walking out just 90 minutes later with my own plaster mold of an eye on a column and it was life-changing. I, I went home that night to my dad and I was like, let's go on a walk. I, I want to walk around our neighborhood and I grabbed my scooter and he was walking next to me and I was looking around and I was so excited when I saw the Ionic Column holding up a porch in my neighborhood. It was, it, it was life changing. And um, at this point, I'd lived in my neighborhood for 13 years, but that night changed how I had seen it forever. Um, and I think that New Heights was really the spark for what my life would become at this point. Um, that first year at Gala, when I took this New Heights program, every day was changed and a new excitement was arisen in me. I began taking architecture and design classes any chance I got. I was longing for that void in me to be filled, we could say. Um, but about a year ago, I started working for Elizabeth Dinkle Design. I was an intern, very, I was very lucky to be an intern with them. And I reconnected with Sonia and the New Heights program. And it was this great description of what I see as fate, where I, I hadn't seen them for, for four years, six years. And then Sonia shows up one day and she's like, oh, you, you took the New Heights program. And I was like, yeah, that changed my life. Um, so I was very lucky in that way. Um, and one thing about, Sonia reconnecting with me 
was that I, for every year after I took the New Heights program, I'd see these new sixth graders walking into this classroom and getting to experience that spark that I had experienced seven years ago. And so I would be so jealous because I just wanted to do that again and again and again. But I was also so proud that they would get to experience that for themselves and experience that love for architecture and design starting within themselves. And I think that the New Heights program does an amazing job bringing this ambitious field to these young girls that would not otherwise be able to get to partake in it, um, which is not something that I ever thought I would be able to partake in. And so now I walk around UCLA campus and I have thought about New Heights for seven years and I'm walking around in this new world, kind of. I was born at UCLA, but I, it's new world, <laughs> college. Um, but I, I'm walking around and I'm thinking back to what New Heights taught me and what that, like, that eager eye that I got back then that is now just within me at all times when I'm looking around. So I'm very grateful that I was able to be here. Thank you, Sonia. And thank you all for having me. I, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. I got a gang doing it now. I love that. I hope, uh, I hope you all are having a wonderful evening. If I could have your attention for just one second, please. So, so this year, we, um, we, we, lost, a, we lost a friend, uh, Suzanne Reinstein. Um, a good friend, an incredible, incredible creative, a wonderful, beautiful mind. Um, and a good friend of the ICAA, so Southern California chapter. And to, to say a few words, if you wouldn't mind, please welcoming Mark Appleton. We lost her, I think, way too soon. Um, she was one of our earliest and most devoted supporters. And 20 years ago or thereabouts, when we had no funding, no real home. We certainly didn't have this wonderful event. Um, we depended on the hospitality of a few people, a few special people. Uh, Nancy Powers certainly was one. Uh, some of you who are maybe as old as I am will remember many evenings in uh, Nancy's studio barn, which were really terrific. Um, Another of our great and generous uh, friends then, back then was Suzanne. And she offered up her house, Holly ha her store, Hollyhock House, then in West Hollywood, for events and talks and book signings. Whenever we asked, um, these people offered. And they always did this while providing catered food and drinks and a, and a beautiful setting for everything. And we were really well taken care of. Suzanne, along with her late husband, Fred, also generously hosted many amazing parties and gatherings at their home in, in Hancock Park. Her philanthropy uh, extended well beyond the ICAA and included the LA Conservancy, the Kipps Bay Boys and Girls Club, the Garden Conservancy, and other many worthy causes. As a designer, she won many honors and awards, including an ICAA Ross Award for her interior design, as well as this chapter's Legacy Award. She was as kind and generous and modest as she was sophisticated and accomplished a pretty rare combination in today's world. Her own house in Santa Barbara, sadly one of her last projects, was deeply personal and a truly magical reflection of her quiet elegance. It's up for sale now and for all I know may have sold recently, but I hope some of you got a chance to see it. If you didn't, it's in her last book and I urge you to look at it. And in closing, I want to read something from that book that she wrote, which I think um, 
was very much Suzanne. Resilience and flexibility are important in life as well as design. These houses are the best, I, the last I plan to do as I have closed my studio and all the designers who worked with me at SRA have started their own businesses. While working on these projects, the storage warehouse we used burned down and with that we lost not only specially bought antiques for clients but also family treasures of theirs and of mine that, have been placed in, that had been placed into storage temporarily. The fire was devastating but we all pulled ourselves together and got on with it. The same is true with cancer, which I have been dealing with. Things happen, good and not so good. But whatever happens, it's important to, to have a special place to which you can retreat and in which you can feel comfortable and truly at home. Having beautiful things around you is a wonderful but living beautiful, beautifully, is more important. So if you would all lift your glasses, um, I'd like to propose a toast to this extraordinary and remarkable lady, dear friend, who led a beautiful life and shared it with us all. To Suzanne, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope you all are having a wonderful evening so far. You should all have dinner by now. And if you wouldn't mind, um, where's Eric Evans? I'd love to, uh, for Eric to, there he is, hi. Eric, would you mind coming up? And uh, I, I think you have a few words for our man of the hour. Please welcome Eric to the stage. What a pleasure it is to see all of you here tonight. Um, good evening. This Legacy Award now has a considerable history with our chapter. And we have been blessed to have had the opportunity to honor a truly distinguished list of individuals over the years. All of them are accomplished leaders in architecture, landscape, interior design, real estate, and construction all have left a deep, endearing mark upon the built environment of Southern California. And each in their own way has contributed to amplifying the message and the mission of the Institute of Classical Architecture and Art. But tonight, in a sense, we return to our roots. Tonight, we honor one of our own. It is such a pleasure for me to be here this evening to introduce my colleague, my friend, and my fellow traveler, Tim Barber. Tim Barber was born in an historic canal town in rural Ohio with a rich and varied history of federal and Greek revival architecture. He earned his Bachelor of Architecture degree from the University of Cincinnati. As were nearly all major universities in the United States, this was a modernist school. Yet for his thesis, Tim adapted a 1930 Georgian Revival hospital into an artist's live-work collective. Tim worked in Los Angeles renovating multifamily housing for a while. And then in 1994, he launched his own design firm, Tim Barber Architects. Over the years, Tim has produced a diverse portfolio of work in a variety of traditional and occasionally modernist styles. But no matter the character of the architecture, there is an important defining through line to his firm's creative output. It is profoundly humane. His buildings are carefully considered and client-focused and seem to be predicated on using the language of architecture to create environments with, which nurture and empower people. 
I first met Tim around 2004 when we were both part of the initial group of practitioners who contributed to the birth of the Southern California chapter of the ICAA. Mark Appleton and David Cohen, both here this evening, had founded our group as one of the very earliest regional chapters of the Institute and had invited a small group of like-minded people, including Tim and me, to join the endeavor. Our core group worked diligently to grow the Southern California chapter and to establish, refine, and improve our programs. I remember our early chapter meetings, which consisted of a handful of people sitting around in a circle of folding chairs in my office conference room, <laughs> brainstorming about how to bootstrap an educational program or how to host a lecture series. Certainly, we've come a long way. And Tim Barber was integral in guiding our chapter to become an effective, vibrant organization that it is today. From the beginning, Tim's passion for education was beautifully aligned with the core mission of the Institute. Tim immersed himself deeply in the ICAA core curriculum when he studied at the Winter Intensive in New York City in 2009. As chapter president, Tim's enthusiasm and sharp focus on our educational endeavors inspired the Southern California chapter to set the standard for educational curriculum and programs for regional chapters. Very soon, our chapter was considered a model for content and administration of educational programming, and we became the example which other chapters sought to emulate. Tim's vision and leadership put us on that road. As a consistent member of the SoCal Chapter Education Committee, he continues to influence and guide our programs to this day. Tim's scope of uh, focus soon expanded to include a deep involvement in the Institute nationally. The ICAA was founded in New York and originally an exclusively New York focused organization. As interest in the mission spread, membership seeded out across the United States and eventually a chapter based structure was adopted to provide a way for the mission to be advanced in regions further afield. This was a significant phase shift in the administration of the Institute and Tim was instrumental in guiding this evolution. In three years as chapter, uh, as the president of the College of Chapters and as a member of the National Board, Tim worked tirelessly to guide the chapters to become the new fraternal locus of the ICAA. Tim's single-minded belief in the mission of the Institute and his sensible, nurturing leadership were key factors enabling the ICAA to evolve from a somewhat insular New York-based organization to the eclectic, flourishing national institution it has become. As an architect, a leader, and a mentor, Tim has been an inspiration to many of us in the design community, and he has been a central force in sculpting the ICAA nationally and locally into an effective, essential enterprise. So together, let's learn more about Tim and his world as we watch this video tribute, if we can cue that up. When we first met Tim, I thought he was so kind and so bright. I thought and he was a little skinny. Ah! You don't want your house built by someone that, you know, you want a little heft to your architect, and he was pretty skinny, so I was a little concerned, but you, you thought he was kind, maybe? Yes, I okay. did. So I thought he was kind. The kind outweighed the skinniness, I yes. think, is what, what our overall impression was. My first impression was he was so enthusiastic, so warm, and so giving. When he spoke, it was with such thoughtfulness and mindfulness that I was like, ah, th this guy's a leader. It was really interesting to see how he set himself apart without trying to set himself apart. There are some leaders who are driven by ego and bravado and others whose humility 
and ability to listen to people are the foundation of their leadership skills, and that is Tim. I think it's really important to note about Tim that he looks to the past, and yet he's always finding new ways for design to inspire and enrich our lives. One of the things I love the most about this house is when people come over, they think it's an old house. They can't get over that it was built, that we built it. There's a lot of integrity to his homes, and he's such a sincere person. It's, there's an honesty in the house and the way it's made, too. It sort of comes through. He's so creative, and he's such a visionary, and he will just just motivate people. And if you look in the foyer, there's there's sort of a, there's a, you kind of have to walk in and then it opens up. And I said, and that was different than the house I'd seen. I was like, Tim, I like the other house where it was just, you walked in and it was open. And he goes, no, 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 no. He said, there's no drama in that. He said, you want to walk into a smaller space and then let it open up. There's the drama, you know? And when he said it, it was so clear and so connected to his talent that I was just like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna, he must know more than I do and go Tim, go, let's have a little drama. I think the thing that's important to know about Tim, that he is absolutely passionate about education, about new ideas, new programs, both for himself and for the ICAA. He has done so much to advance the educational mission of the chapter in the ICAA. He was just such a champion for promoting our educational classes, our programs. Tim was able to develop a forum for meaningful, respectful dialogue that led to this success of the chapters. With so many divergent views, Tim had the humility and tact to carefully guide people to a position where we could act on the programs that we so wanted to produce. He is truly collaborative because at, at every point I've seen him put forward the ideas of others above his own. I think his design legacy will be how he really stays true to the tenets of classical architecture in contemporary Los Angeles, in this world that we're in where we have to be conscious of the environment, you know, this impact on the environment. His ability to see beauty and sustainability not as separate means to an end, but as a interwoven, interconnected reality that one is not mutually exclusive of the other. Actually, I think he has evolved the next generation of classicists, and honestly, it inspires me as well. It, it just seems that when you when you mention Tim's name, everyone kind of like has had such a good experience. And he's a uh, contemplative person who has a deep, deep soul. I've always felt a special connection with Tim. I think it's just because of who he is as a human being. He's just so creative and warm and welcoming. And he's one of those people that he comes in a room and he makes every single person in that room feel special. So Tim, as an artist in your craft, and an artist in your life and an artist in your relationships. Thank you from all of us at ICAA for everything you've given this organization. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we recognize Tim Barber as our 2023 Legacy Award honoree. And we have this incredible heavy statue for you. Thank you. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. We can leave it here. There's, okay. a There's a box there. Is this where I'm? 
this is say you. something. This is indeed it. Thank you. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not a classical architect, and I don't really join groups, so I just like wonder why am I standing up here? <clears throat> when David Cohen and Mark Appleton first approached me to join this adventure, I'm not sure, but I, I, I think there might have been an ironic column in my understanding of classicism. <clears throat> I now know there isn't, but I may never use an ionic column in my work, but thanks to the ICAA, I know how to draw one and I know what it means. And we'll get back to that. Um, it's, uh, it's been, uh, well, let me, I have a note before I lose my place. I <clears throat> um, joined this group because I knew that, what is it now, 55 years ago, classical America had started uh, trying to revive and, and reinstitute the teaching of classicism in our colleges and our built work. And uh, frankly, I don't think many of us in this room have studied the principles of proportion and geometry and hierarchy or the, the drawing skills of, of observational drawing or uh, ink wash. And we didn't learn that in college, but now thanks to the ICAA, um, that education is becoming a valued complement to art and architecture education in colleges across the country, one school at a time, but we're making some serious progress. So I believe I'm being recognized tonight because of my contribution to the education program here in this chapter. We have had some great ideas and courage and the commitment to build something unprecedented, something kind of rogue. We have, over the last 15 years, built the strongest classical program of any chapter in the country, and we've been instrumental in developing those programs. We're super lucky to have some regional partners in crime here tonight with us. I would just like to have them stand, if they will, from the Philadelphia chapter, Barbara Everline. And from the Southeast chapter, Andrew Kogar. They have worked harder than me and given more than me, and you are awesome. Um, actually, let's have a little more cardio before we finish dinner. Who in this room has attended an ICAA class? Please raise your hand. Pretty good. Who has served on the Education Committee? Please raise your hand. Okay, who in this room has sponsored an ICAA education program or class? Please stand. Uh, don't sit down, don't, no, 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 don't sit down. Now, who in this room has taught an ICAA education class? Where's Bob? There you go, there you go. Um, these, the sponsors and the teachers, are tonight's real heroes. So please, after dinner, please find them, thank them in person. Um, we have gone on. Uh, as you can see in the video, we have expanded our program to teach middle schoolers. In 2015, our own Mary Kate Spock worked with our president, Peter Leiden, to launch New Heights at her alma mater in New York, the Marymount School. It's been eight years, and now in eight chapters, we're, we're presenting New Heights. But in Los Angeles this year, we are doing it in two different schools, thanks to the very hard work of Ashley Ranney. Ashley, where are you? <laughs> so, not only that, but we are putting our heads together to plan something even better. We're trying to expand our young designer education into high schools, and we're working very hard to bring 
the study of classical art back into our curriculum. So watch out. There's more to come. Um, that's work, but a lot of the work goes on behind the curtain. So finding the faculty, securing the venue, the insurances, uh, writing the grant proposals, uh, seeking the academic credits, just organizing the students. Diane Sipos, please stand. Very good. Sixteen years of, of twisting each other's arms in building this program, Diane has been instrumental in our success. Last year, she passed the baton to Sonia Adams, and Sonia is already accelerating our growth. Sonia, where are you? Thank you both. So I, I promised I would say something personal. Uh, but this is personal, actually. People think that the study of classical architecture and art is like copying or holding a pencil. I don't see it that way. I think we're holding the world, something bigger. We're learning to problem solve and to be innovative and to be empathetic and be collaborative and to learn from our mistakes. And those skills are sorely missing from our country and our planet. And we have an opportunity through the study of this to do our part and bring them back. So we're growing. We're doing something, I think, pretty exciting. And we would love your help. If you want to contribute the work or the wisdom or the wealth to build this program into where we're headed, we would love you to join this adventure and help us. Last year, I moved to London for a master's degree in historical and sustainable architecture through NYU. That was the most difficult, exhilarating move I have ever made. That move would not have been possible, and the work to build this chapter would not have been possible without the leadership and support of my talented, generous teammates here in Los Angeles. So if you now or have ever worked in my firm, would you please stand? Don't sit down. Many of you know that I'm um, in the process of transitioning my firm to my team. I have no doubt that they will design even better work and contribute to this mission even more than I have. And so for this recognition, for my year in London, for the community that you have built, and for our future, thank you. I know, I have totally lost the room. I have totally lost it, but look, here's the, no, Sonia, I got the, look, we got the, look. Listen, here's what I can promise you. This is the last time you're gonna hear from me for tonight. So, there's that. Um, 
And what happened this time? I had Philly in the house, like, doing it better than I could. Nothing. I got crickets. <laughs> if I could just have your attention for one more second. This is really... Look, I love it that... I know you hear me. I, kn I know you hear me. <laughs> Three minutes max. Plus, dessert is coming. You should have dessert by now. Um, thank you. Listen, a couple of things. First of all, I just, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for coming out. You know, um, life has gotten very complicated in a post-pandemic world, and when we can still find the time to come out and celebrate incredibly special people, it's a good thing. And um, this is one of those times. Tim, congratulations, man. Well deserved. You are... And it's interesting, too. Have you ever seen someone receiving an award who did everything they could to like push the attention off onto somebody else? And that says a lot about you. And so congratulations, really well deserved, uh, amazing. Um, and also, I wanna make sure to thank Sonia Adams, Darren Franks, and the board of the ICAA, Southern California chapter. Sometimes we don't, we, and I should also say the sponsors of the ICAA Southern California chapter, because with, without you, this doesn't happen. So thank you for supporting the group. It's very important. Um, you can see firsthand how your work is influencing our youth. You can see what's happening. And these are the architects of tomorrow. These are the futurists of tomorrow. These are the people who are gonna be shaping the way that we live tomorrow because of what you're doing today. So thank you very much for coming out. Thank you very much for supporting. Tim, again, thank you and congratulations. And um, have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Design Hardware's newly remodeled showroom is where you will find a gallery-style space with a thoughtful display of products, purposefully positioned to allow unbridled exploration and discovery. High-end faucets, luxury tile, Natural stone, wood floors, and bespoke hardware selections are presented in a holistic manner, strategically arranged to stimulate creativity and transition your vision from the conceptual stage to a fully realized space. Conveniently located, free parking available, stop by to find your inspiration, collect samples, get expert advice, and tackle everything on your shopping list all in one place. Visit them online at designhardware.com or in the real world, 6053 West 3rd Street in Los Angeles. This was amazing. Really, what a wonderful night. Amazing. Thank you, ICAA, for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you to all who participated in this incredible night. If you would like to attend the event uh, this year, 2024, or join the ICAA Southern California chapter, which I highly recommend, check the show notes for links, and you can hear why I love doing this um, between this episode and the one last year honoring um, Richard Landry. I, I just, I, I love this organization. I love this group. And they, you can tell by listening, man, they're fun. So anyway, uh, thank you to my partners and sponsors, Thermosol Design Hardware, for your continued and unwavering support of the show and for the design community. It's appreciated. For more stories like these from the design community, please make sure you are subscribing to the podcast so you receive new episodes automatically when they're published. That way, you never miss an episode. Convo by Design is available everywhere you find your favorite podcasts. Thanks for listening. Until next week, be well, and take today first. 